This was last summer when I was driving in a wooded area in Indiana, close to midnight about an hour from home. I was coming back from visiting my brother in Iowa. At first, it was just like any other drive. My usual playlist was on, the cars hummed kind of comforting, and my Chevy's headlights were barely lighting up the road. I was just thinking about my day. It was a good visit, been a while since I sat down with my brother and had a beer. We were super close as kids, but now we don't see each other much, living in separate states. Anyway, this stretch of highway that I was on, it's dead silent and not many lights. Sort of out there in the middle of nowhere. Miles and miles of trees on either side, though. It felt like I was cutting right through a forest, which I guess I was. Every so often, a fresh, earthy smell would drift into the car. A nice change from the air conditioning. I'm just driving, lost in my thoughts when suddenly I spot these glowing things by the road. My first thought was probably some animal, must be a deer or something with the headlights catching its eyes. But nope, these weren't normal animal eyes. They were deep, glowing yellow. Gave me an instant chill. They seemed too high off the ground for a deer. And then there was the smell. As I got closer, this stink wafts into my car. Now, I know I said I like the smell of the greenery out here, but this, this was different. It was a really bad smell, like something rotten. It was then, I hear a sound coming from the tree line, a deep, unsettling growl. In all my years of driving, I've never experienced anything like that. It caught me off guard because it was exactly like a dog's growl, but way deeper and louder. I thought about stopping, wondering if an animal was hurt. But then I thought, no way. You do not stop in the middle of a forest line road for weird eyes and creepy growls. So I did the opposite and hit the gas, eager to put some distance between me and whatever was out there. But as I zoomed past, my headlights fell on this creature. I couldn't believe what I saw. It was covered in thick fur, some bits sticking out, shining in the light. I remember seeing broad shoulders, beastly stature, and is it weird to say this? Elongated feet. Feet that seemed equipped for running. And here's the really crazy part. For a split second, it looked like it was standing upright. This was definitely a silhouette unlike anything I've ever seen. But those eyes, those glowing yellow eyes lingered on in my mirror until they were swallowed by the dark. That's when I realized that the late night peaceful drives were never going to feel the same again for me. When I glanced in the rearview mirror, I felt my stomach drop. There was this creature just crossing the highway. It moved awkwardly, with its bulky body and strangely bent legs, like you'd see on a dog or a wolf. I don't know why, but I slammed on the brakes, the car screeching to a stop. Its eyes were locked on my car the whole time. I stopped at a safe distance, my heart slamming against my ribs. I could see it more clearly now, as it stood under the dim glow of the road lights. This thing was tall like maybe eight feet or so. It was covered in ragged, thick, dark fur, and its chest was broad and muscular. Its arms hung by its side, claws glistening ominously under the pale yellow road lights. But the face, I will never forget that face. It had this scarred face with a furrowed forehead and a pronounced brow ridge. Up close, those eyes weren't just yellow. They were glowing, bright and scary. Its face was patchy with fur, and I could see its long, sharp teeth under a snarling lip. Below the eyes was a massive snout. It was unmistakably canine. Then, out of nowhere, it throws its head back and howls so loud, it shook me. Not like any dog or wolf I've heard before. It was a much deeper roar that echoed off the trees, breaking the night's silence. In that moment, all my doubts about what I was seeing evaporated. It was like something from a horror movie, or some old myth, right there in front of me. I knew I wasn't imagining this. I guess I just sat there, totally freaked out for a minute or two, not wanting to tear my eyes away from this nightmare brought to life. It then gave me one more glowing stare, snarled menacingly, and lumbered back into the forest, disappearing from sight. I just sat there in the car for a few minutes, shocked. The night felt different now, kind of spooky. I finally snapped back to reality and with a shaky hand, managed to put the car in drive and move along. 
Every shadow or rustle that I noticed in the forest made me shiver. I got home that night, but sleep was a stranger. I kept seeing those yellow eyes, the slavering mouth, and that haunting howl echoed in my ear every time I closed my eyes. For many nights after that, those images would jolt me awake from my sleep. Now, my night drives are never quite the same. It's a reminder, I guess, that you never know what's out there in the dark. So, if you ever see glowing eyes at night, maybe just keep driving. You never know. This happened in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, while I was on one of my shell collecting trips. You could say that collecting shells is a big time hobby of mine. This happened about two years ago during the late summer season when the seashells are at their most abundant. I'm not really a sea person in terms of going in and swimming, but I've always loved the sound of the waves and the salty air. The ocean's like a mystery to me, beautiful and puzzling, and I love bringing a piece of that back home with my shells. So, on this sunny day, I went to Myrtle Beach with my bucket, really excited. The early morning sun lifted my spirits, and the beach was quieter than usual. Just another day of walking along the shoreline, sand between my toes, the calm rhythm of the waves, the perfect setup to relax my mind. I had my regular spots where I found the prettiest shells, and started with those. Finding a unique shell feels like winning a prize to me. Everything was normal, until around noon when something changed. It was a weird shift in the atmosphere, the kind you feel rather than see, like a sudden chill that wakes you up. My bucket was three quarters filled, and I was knee deep in water, scanning the receding waves for their discarded treasures. But then out of the blue, I got this gut-wrenching feeling. Suddenly, it got weirdly silent. No people talking, no seagulls, just silence. In the midst of all this, I noticed something odd in the sea, breaking the rhythm of the waves. I squinted against the bright light, my heart beating faster, trying to figure out what I was seeing. It looked like the tentacle of an enormous sea creature, jutting out of the water before it disappeared back beneath the surface. But of course, it couldn't be that. Getting a strange sensation, I moved away from the water and treaded further inland. But there was this strange, hypnotic aura, a pull to the waves that I hadn't noticed before. Yet, like an inexplicable instinct, I was simultaneously drawn to it and fearful of it. I stood there, super alert, and every wave sounded like a drum in my ears. The air suddenly turned briny, stagnant, and oddly cold. I know it sounds crazy, but the silence was so deep and weird. Was this all in my head? Or was I in the wake of an encounter of an unknown kind? Out of nowhere, something huge burst out of the water. I couldn't believe my eyes as this massive creature came out of the water. Kind of like a dragon you'd see in a storybook. It dwarfed anything else I've ever seen come out of the water like that. The serpentine body slithered and twisted, partially concealed under the sea's surface. Its huge glowing eyes were staring right at me almost hypnotizing. I was scared stiff, but I couldn't look away from those eyes. They were fascinating, but also kind of creepy. I broke away from the gaze and glanced at its body. It had what seemed like scales or thick skin and things like fins or flippers, but the part that will forever haunt me was its jaw. Its huge jaw was full of sharp teeth that looked like they could crush anything. I started to smell something weird like seaweed and something else I couldn't place. It smelled like the ocean, but there was something off about it. Adding to the whole visceral experience was a terrifying bellow, a sound so loud and deep that it shook me to my core. It felt like a warning. Then, just like that, the creature disappeared back into the water. The water resumed its rhythm, pounding the shore as if nothing had happened. I stood frozen, the grip on my bucket tight as can be, as my hands were clenching without me even realizing it. I snapped out of my trance-like state and found myself staring at the sea, its surface now calm. It was over and I suddenly felt like I was safe, at least for now. The sun was still bright, but I didn't feel like going into the water anymore. I packed up all my stuff and left the beach, but of course my mind was racing. 
old sea stories speak of monsters, and they usually turn into myths and fables, feared by many and believed by few. Yet, I knew that I saw something real, as real as the shells in my bucket. This event changed my perspective. Every time I hear the quiet crash of the waves or smell the salt in the air, I am reminded of that day. Now, the ocean sounds like it's warning me. The sea isn't just made up of all things beautiful. It's also an abyss of unknown and uncanny creatures that live beneath the colossal waves. The feeling stays, and every shell I collect now serves as a stark reminder of that encounter. I had to take a break. Not a vacation or a trip or even a day off, just a break. I needed it. You could say I was itching for it. So, there I was in Mohican State Park in Ohio, a couple of hours drive from either Columbus or Cleveland. I had driven down from Cleveland, and it was a perfect place to disconnect and get off the grid, as they say. It was a clear, cool night. I decided to camp alone that weekend. The city just got to me, with all its noise and constant work stuff. That's why I was here in the woods alone, experiencing the stillness. Throughout the day, I busied myself setting up camp and wandering close to my campsite. I find that it's calming, making a spot in the woods your own. As the sun began to dip below the horizon, I hauled out my catch of the day, a couple of fish I'd nabbed from a nearby stream. It's not often you get to cook dinner over a fire with the sun setting like that. After dinner, I leaned back my back resting on the cool rock behind me. A cigar between my lips, I didn't actually smoke them, and a thermos of black coffee by my side. The stars twinkling above and the moon shining in the dark sky made me feel pretty content. I was taking a thoughtful chomp of the stogie when I heard it, a low guttural growl. I've heard wild animals before, so I'm not totally clueless about them, but this didn't sound like anything I recognized. It was something else. My heart beat just a tad faster in my chest as I slowly looked around, straining my eyes against the dim light. At first, I saw nothing, but then, looming at the edge of the firelight, I saw it. It was tall, maybe seven or eight feet. This creature was standing up, right there in the moonlight. It was big, really muscular. Its legs were weird, kind of like a dog's, but with elongated feet. It looked even weirder standing on two legs, with a sort of hunch in its back. It gave off a scent putrid, rancid even, like something had died and had been left to rot in the sun. It was disgusting, and I couldn't help but grimace. I could just about make out a set of eyes yellow, glowing in the darkness, their gaze fixed on me. I felt those eyes on me, heavy and intense. That growl came again. A deep, angry sound that really shook me up and made everything in me scream to run. But my body felt frozen while my mind grappled with what I was seeing. It felt absurd, unreal. I still couldn't believe my eyes, disbelief battling the very concrete fear that was beginning to take root. It took a step closer, an elongated, animalistic step that was quickly followed by another guttural growl. Its body was covered in dark, matted fur. That was when the thought hit me. I was not alone in this wilderness. I was sharing it with a creature, a being, the likes of which I'd never before encountered. But one thing was clear in my head. I had to make it through this night. The rustling got louder and I just stopped dead. My heart was pounding like crazy and I couldn't shake off these insane thoughts about what could happen. Then it stepped out from between two trees its head held high. Its eyes glowed and met mine. And even in the dark, you could tell this thing was no ordinary animal. I was freaking out. All my thoughts jumbled up and making me even more scared. I must have stood there for what felt like forever, just staring at it. From a distance, I could see how scary it looked. It had this huge body covered in thick black fur. Its long muscular arms ended in deadly looking claws. The face was worse, a scarred, elongated muzzle, a pronounced brow above those damn glowing eyes. It looked kind of human, but not natural. I was trembling with dread, yet I stood my ground, gaze never leaving the creature 
until a deep guttural howl sliced through the stillness. The sound was chilling, a deep echoing roar that seemed to shake me to my very soul, marking its territory. It made my blood run cold and I was freaking out. I was so scared I could hardly breathe. Then, quite abruptly, it turned, retreating further into the forest, its figure disappearing into the inky dark beyond. I was so relieved I just collapsed on the ground, totally drained from all that adrenaline. I stayed huddled there for a long time, the disturbingly fresh memory of the growl imprinted in my mind. Night fell deeper while I grappled with what I had witnessed. I was shaken to my core, my thoughts a whirlpool of bewilderment. The sounds of the forest, the rustling leaves and the distant hoot of an owl, they all seemed so much louder in the aftermath of the brief, terrifying encounter. Every noise had me thinking it might come back. That whole thing made me super jumpy. I kept thinking every snap of a branch was it coming after me, and every shadow looked like a wolf, especially with how the firelight moved. I wished for daylight, for I dreaded each passing minute of the night, my heartbeat echoing that menacing growl. In the comfort of my tent, I wrestled with sleep, a part of me still expecting to hear that dreadful growl again. But as the night stretched on, my trembling exhaustion won against my acute fear. Only when the first rays of the morning sun seeped into my tent did I let out a breath. I was alive, I had survived the night, but even as the day came alive with the chirping of birds, the knowledge that such a creature existed had forever tainted my peaceful solitude in the woods. Was I afraid? Absolutely. But there was also a dark, gnawing curiosity. A part of me wanted to see the creature again, to confirm the events of the previous night. But as I packed my things, leaving nothing but extinguished firewood behind, I knew I wouldn't be returning, not anytime soon at least. Each time I close my eyes, I still see its sharp, glowing gaze glaring back at me. It really hit me. Not everything out there in the forest is as harmless as a deer or rabbit. Some things you encounter are nothing like anything you could ever imagine. That encounter, it's left a mark on me. I can't tell if it's fear or respect but it'll stick with me for a long, long time. It happened a few years ago, in late November. I was driving through the mountains in eastern Pennsylvania. Out there the roads twist and turn a lot. I've always been a night owl. Something about driving at night, especially on these mountain roads, just calms me down. It felt like the whole world was quiet and calm, just for me. That particular night, the moon was full and super bright, almost making the trees glow. Kind of spooky, but pretty. I was in my old Ford truck, which always grumbled on uphill drives, but I loved that thing. I was listening to Bob Dylan, windows down, and you could also hear the crickets and leaves rustling outside. It was a perfect mix. His voice mixed with the quiet of the mountains really makes you feel alone. It's weird how some moments just make you think. Driving down those almost empty roads, with the trees on one side and just darkness on the other, I couldn't help feeling like someone was watching me. You know that gut feeling you get when you feel someone's eyes on you, even if you can't see them? Same thing. But I chalked it up to just the eerie moonlight playing tricks on my nerves. I was really focused on the road when suddenly the radio started going all staticky. Then, the music got replaced by this weird noise, kind of like plastic being crinkled. It was bizarre considering I had never had any signal issues here before. I remember leaning over, fiddling with the knobs trying to fix it, when I felt the car shudder, akin to driving over a speed bump. Thinking it was just a pothole, I slowed down. However, as I looked up, my high beams flashed on something that appeared to lump and rise from the side of the road. It was huge, casting a big shadow in the moonlight. Trying to get a better look, I squinted against the darkness, but the unexpected interruption threw me into cautious anxiety. It's weird how a nice moonlit drive can suddenly feel like you're in some mystery movie. Then there was this awful smell, like a dumpster that's been sitting out too long. Having worked on farms before, I was used to bad smells. But this was something else, putrid, sour, as if something was rotting. I somehow suppressed the urge to gag, 
my senses overpowering the serenading music, now completely drowned out by the low drone of static. Right then, I was just scared and all I could think was that I needed to get out of there fast. Stepping on the accelerator, I veered past the mysterious lump, my heart pounding in anxiety and fear for the unexpected encounter that lay ahead. As I got closer, squinting into the darkness, I saw something so bizarre I could hardly believe it at first. It was massive, like eight or nine feet tall, just slowly walking across the road, just like you hear in those wild stories. Its back was to me, like it didn't even care I was there, and it was huge. At first, it looked like it was wearing a bumpy coat made of rocks, but then I realized those were its muscles. It was covered in dark brown, almost reddish hair, like it just stepped out of the wild itself. Then, it slowed in its stride and turned. It had a face that wasn't quite an animal's, but not a man's either. Really weird and kind of scary. It had this prominent forehead that sloped back into a rather peculiar skull. A heavy jaw with a jutting chin, and its eyes were deep set, as if years of living in the wild had carved them into their sockets. But what terrified me the most were those eyes, so eerily human, glowing against the headlights like a lurid dream. My heart was exploding in my chest like a battering ram. A cold sweat ran down my back when this awful rotten smell filled the car, and I felt sick. My hands clasped the steering wheel tighter as it took one last long glance at me before it moved again. It started to stride longer, like there was this raw power in each step. Before I could react or contemplate my next move, it had crossed to the other side and vanished into the dark abyss of the woods leaving behind nothing but the disturbed underbrush swaying under the moonlight and the rank smell lingering in the air like a ghost. I sat there, dumbfounded. The music was gone, replaced by just the silence of the night and the pounding of my heart. Did I just witness a Sasquatch crossing the road? Was it even real, or was my mind playing tricks on me? I drove back in a mystified haze, my mind whirling with a myriad of thoughts. A part of me questioned my sanity. The other part brimmed with exhilaration, believing I had just witnessed something supernatural. For a city guy like me, not used to all this nature stuff, the image of that creature, especially its eyes, just stuck with me. Ever since, my night drives feel different, like I'm seeing a side of nature I never knew. I wouldn't say it scared me off driving at night. In fact, it has made me even more hypnotized towards the mysteries sleeping under the moon's tranquil glow. I'm checking my rearview mirror a lot more now when I'm out at night. Was it real or did I just imagine it? Maybe it was just the moonlight playing tricks. I can't tell. All I can say is, moonlit drives aren't just romantic anymore. They can also drag you into the realm of the unexplained and unknown. That evening in Door County, Wisconsin, was really something. Dodor County is this quiet spot with an interesting location. It's on a peninsula between Green Bay and Lake Michigan. It's so tranquil there. And that night, a couple years back, it was just me and the sound of the waves hitting the shore. I was spending a weekend at my lake house and taking a walk near the water. I've always loved the night for its peace. It's got a quietness you just don't get during the day. So there I was, walking along the shore, the moonlight shining down, just letting my thoughts wander. It seemed just like any other normal night, until it wasn't. I started feeling this a weird electric sense in the air. Suddenly, the night felt different, colder and kind of strange. Have you ever played a song you know by heart, but one note is just slightly out of tune? It felt like that. The calm night I was enjoying just didn't feel the same anymore. The waves that were soothing before now felt spooky, and the moonlight that looked beautiful earlier made me feel kind of out of place. The air felt tense, like something was about to go down. My steps felt heavy, and every crunch on the path seemed louder and a bit scary in the silence. Something was without a doubt not quite right. What happened next, whether it was real or just my imagination, I'll never forget it. The vast expanse of the lake, now with this strange and unnatural calm, 
began to look intimidating. A thin layer of fog began to roll in over the water, covering the surface in a hazy mist. And then the smell hit me. Not the fresh, briny odor of a lake shore, not the dampness of the fog, but a fouler scent entirely. Reminiscent of the time I discovered a forgotten rodent trap in the shed. Only a hundred times more potent. The combination of elements, the eerie quiet, the growing chill in the air, and the offensive odor escalating with every breath set my nerves tingling and warning. I trusted my instincts and started to head back when I heard it. A soft crunching sound, like the rustling of dead leaves or the snapping of twigs under the footfall of a large creature. The sound seemed to be coming from further up along the shoreline. All of a sudden, all air seemed to have evaporated from around me, leaving me gasping. I tried to rationalize it as somehow normal, but telling myself that didn't help. I still felt scared, and I couldn't shake off this creepy image in my head of some nightmare creature. I squinted into the fog, trying to make out the source of the sound. That's when I spotted it. Just at the edge of visibility, moving slightly, was a tall figure. I rubbed my eyes, thinking they were playing tricks on me. It was too thin to be human, like nothing I'd ever seen. The figure loomed at the water's edge, close to nine feet tall. As I realized what I was seeing, fear gripped me hard. It wasn't just any animal. It was something monstrous, something my mind couldn't even make sense of. With a deer-like skeletal structure, it moved on what I can only describe as the legs of an elk, except more grotesque and skeletal. Its body was like a nightmare, skin stretched over bones and rotting flesh, like it was barely holding together. But the worst part was its face, or rather, where its face should be. It had antlers on its head, and instead of a face, just two shining lights like eyes. Those yellow eyes glowed eerily through the enveloping fog. That's when it dawned on me. I was staring straight at a wendigo. I remembered the old stories about a spirit, half beast, half man, I heard as a kid. It must have known I was there because it vanished as fast as it appeared, moving in a way I can't even describe. It just melted into the night, silent, leaving only the fog behind. The silence left in its wake was almost as eerie as the encounter itself. I wasn't sure how long I stood rooted to the spot, my mind dealing with the reality of what I had just witnessed, questioning my own sanity. I somehow managed to turn and walk away, leaving the creepy, quiet shoreline behind. That night, no sleep came to me. My head was filled with disturbing images, replays of that indescribable creature I'd come entirely too close to. I couldn't stop thinking about how it appeared and vanished, those glowing eyes, and the deep silence that came after. In the comforting light of day, the night's encounter seemed almost unreal, but the vivid memories played again and again in my mind, never fading the way dreams do, serving as a chilling reminder that it really did happen. The encounter left me with more questions than I started with, thrusting me into an uncanny reality. From then on, I've never been able to shake off this feeling that our reality is less sturdy than we believe, that there truly are things that can't be easily explicable or fit into the confines of our understanding. I'm a park ranger in West Virginia, been at it for years now. Most of my time's been at Blackwater Falls State Park. It's a beautiful, vast place. This particular incident happened not too long ago, during one of those moonless nights. It was around 2 a.m., and I was about to round off my shift when I got a distress call from one of our campers. Now, you'd be surprised at some of the distress calls I've had to respond to over the years. Lost dogs, missing keys, you name it. I've gotten calls about it. So, naturally, my first instinct was to brush this late night call off as just another camper getting spooked by a raccoon in a trash can. But you can't be too sure, right? So off I went in my patrol car towards the camper. That night, the park was extra quiet, kinda eerie. I parked near the bathhouse, always a popular front line for raccoons' guerrilla warfare. It was dark, with just a few slits of starlight coming through the trees. The picnic tables and fire pits were hidden in the dark, and the trees seemed to sway, 
like they were listening to some silent tune. Something was off that night. I've spent enough time in the wilderness to recognize the usual symphony of the night, where every creature plays its part. But that night, it was like everything was on mute, no usual sounds of the wild. The silence was almost unnerving. The only sound I could make out was the crunch of my boots against the gravel as I began my short trek to the camper's site. Armed with my trusty flashlight, I ventured onwards, the beam cutting through the darkness showing only a few feet ahead. As the bathhouse lights got smaller behind me, I suddenly heard rustling and a weird flapping sound above me. I quickly shone my flashlight up and caught a glimpse of something. Whatever it was, it was fast, leaving a rustle of leaves and a chill in its wake. Now, I don't get frightened easily, but that sound, it felt alien and out of place. I'd never heard anything like it in all my years here. I stood there quiet all around, feeling a bit nervous. Gathering my gumption, I decided to move ahead. I still had a job to do. The faster I could confirm this was just another misidentified wildlife situation, the sooner I could get back to the warmth and security of my station. But somewhere deep down, I had a sense that tonight wouldn't be so simple. Nearing the camper's site, my flashlight's beam hit a tall figure standing near the bathhouse. I stopped in my tracks. At that moment, I froze. My heart stopped and I couldn't breathe. What I saw in the flashlight's beam was not a misidentified raccoon or a camper in distress. No, it wasn't anything I had encountered in my career as a park ranger. It looked like something straight out of a scary story. In front of me was this creature, over five feet tall, giving off a vibe so creepy it made the cold night feel warm. It was dressed in black, darker than the night around it. Its body was almost human-like, which was really creepy. It had long, sporadic arms that ended in clawed hands, hanging loose, and by its sides, wings, enormous bat-like wings that seemed folded into its back. But the face, if that's what you can call it, was the scariest part. Staring intensely, I could discern no facial features, except two large, round, and eerily reflective eyes that glowed an unnatural red in my torchlight. It stood in stark contrast to its seeming lack of any other features on what was its gray face. Those chilling red eyes met mine, and then all rational thought abandoned me. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was the Mothman. I knew it instantly from hearing all the local folklore. I've always considered myself a courageous individual. Usually I'm not scared easily, especially with my night shifts in the wilderness. But in that chilling moment, as I stood frozen, my stare locked with this creature of nightmares. Fear was the only thing coursing through me. The creature just stood there, as if it knew how much it freaked me out. Releasing a shaky breath, I took a shaky step back not daring to turn my back on the creature. It was still perfectly still, those inscrutable eyes fixated upon mine, casting a cold dread that made me feel wholly hunted. I dropped everything and bolted for the patrol car, tripping in my panic, heart racing. I didn't look back, fearing those eyes to pierce me again. I jumped into the car, drove off, and the quiet woods just disappeared behind me. Back at my post, I reported the incident describing the creature in as much detail as I could muster. My superiors were skeptical, chuckling it off as an effect of the graveyard shift. Fever dreams, they said, but the terror in my own retelling had me certain that this could be no dream. I can't shake that encounter. I still wake up all sweaty, with those red eyes haunting me, even after I'm awake. That night changed how I see the park, and night itself gave me a real respect for the unknown. The distress call had long been forgotten. The creature I saw that night, the Mothman as they later referred to it, had left a lasting impression, enough to make night shifts feel like a haunting reminder of the terror that still sails through the woods of Blackwater Falls. This happened a couple months back at Sika Hollow State Park in South Dakota when the leaves were turning crispy and golden. The park was named Sika, a Dakota word for bad or evil, due to the iron-red tinted water which was seen as blood by the Dakota tribe in the area. 
and that should tell you something about the area. Basically, it's shrouded in mystery and ancient stories. I've been a park ranger there for about 10 years. I love the forest, its stillness, its sounds, and its secrets. This particular night, however, everything got twisted. I went out there because hikers kept reporting weird noises coming from deep in the park. One guy claimed he heard heavy footsteps and snapping branches. It sounded like a tourist's tall tale, but the reports were getting more frequent. So I decided to check it out. Honestly, I was skeptical. In my line of duty, myths and urban legends are as common as trees in the woods. But this was part of the routine. Funny how routine makes everything seem so normal. If I had any idea what was going to happen that night, I might have thought twice about going in alone. As I began my patrol, the sun was dipping low behind the trees, their shadows stretching long and dark across the grass. I hadn't heard so much as a squirrel rustle. It was quieter than usual, just my footsteps and some distant owl calls, disturbingly quiet. As I ventured deeper into the park, the ground was covered in autumn leaves, and you could really smell them decaying. It was thick under my feet. It got darker fast, with just my flashlight lighting up the trees. After an hour of strolling in the eerie silence, I reached Brule Creek. By this point, the peaceful nocturnal sounds of the forest had returned. The owls, the foxes, the gentle rustle of the nighttime breeze through the leaves. I was about to call it an uneventful night when a loud crunch came from the woods beyond the creek. I instinctually froze and switched off my flashlight. The noises stopped as if mirroring my quietness. It wasn't a familiar sound. In my many years of service, I've come across all manner of wildlife. But what followed the snap of that branch was nothing like I'd heard before. It was a weird sound. It was a low growl, like the grating of stone, a noise that seemed to reverberate in my chest. This intensity of it was uncanny. It felt predatory. In the dark, trying to figure out those noises, I felt really exposed. All previous skepticism drained away, swallowed by the chilling uncertainty. What lay in front of me in the woods was far from routine and predictability. There was a mystery in that darkness, pulling me in, even though everything in me wanted to run. The decision I made next was arguably the most bone-chilling of my life. Pushing the adrenaline down, I crossed Brule Creek and entered the shrouded darkness of the woods, heading deeper into the dense forest my instincts screaming at me to retreat. I was scared, you know, like when you just know something's off. But I had to see just how unusual this night could turn. The woods were unnaturally quiet again. It was so quiet, my heartbeat sounded loud in my ears. Suddenly, I got that instinctual, someone's watching me sensation down my spine. My flashlight beam was already skimming the undergrowth ahead, and as I panned it up, it caught a shiny reflection about seven feet off the ground. Chills shot up my arms as I focused the light on the most unsettling sight I'd ever seen. There was this huge creature, part man, part dinosaur, towering over me from behind a tree. It was huge, more than six feet, just standing there and staring at me with these bright yellow eyes. I felt a knot of fear in my stomach seeing its sharp white teeth and scales that blended right into the trees. All sorts of scary thoughts ran through my head as I looked at it. Its black claws glinted ominously, highlighting the predatory nature of this entity. It looked ancient, like something that didn't belong in our time. Its eyes looked smart but dangerous, and I couldn't move. But then, in an eye blink, it was gone. Like an elusive shadow, it moved swiftly, disappearing into the undergrowth, leaving me to dwell in the heavy silence. I could still hear my heart pounding in my ears. The ordeal seemed to last forever, but in reality, it was but a few minutes in the presence of whatever that was. Once it was gone, I could finally breathe and think straight. Part of me thought maybe it was just shadows or my fear playing tricks, but the image of that creature, its glaring eyes, and the intensity of my primal terror were as real as the flashlight in my hand. I knew I wasn't imagining things. I was completely lost for an explanation. Did I pursue it? Hell no. Confronting some wild animal is one thing, but that, that was something else entirely. 
Feeling scared like never before, with that image burned into my memory, I got out of there. When I tell this story, people usually look at me like I've gone off the deep end. Did I dream it? Was I really tired and hallucinating? Did I mistake some oddly shaped tree or animal for this reptilian? These questions still haunt me. But one thing is for sure, the park is not the same for me anymore. Those chilling yellow eyes lurk in the shadows and the silence of the forest whispers the secret it once shared. I know this whole thing has really stuck with me, deep down. It isn't every day a man comes to face with such a horrifying marvel of nature. The report suddenly didn't seem like tall tales anymore. There's something out there, hidden well within the wilderness. Skeptics might scoff at me, but I know better since I've met the inhabitant of the dark face to face. So, this happened a few years back when I was on a trip. It was kind of a different kind of tourism. I've always been into old buildings. There's something about the tall spires and the woodwork and all the stories they could tell. This time, my interest had drawn me to the Grand State Capitol building in Des Moines, Iowa. The photos do not do it justice. It was a chilly March afternoon when I arrived. The sun was warm, a nice contrast to the cool breeze. I got out of the taxi in front of the building and it just blew me away. The Capitol building was amazing, with its huge 275-foot golden dome and smaller copper ones around it. Even before stepping inside, I felt surrounded by grandeur and history. Inside, it was even more impressive. The detailed mosaics, carvings, and murals showing Iowa's history were really something. I remember lingering in the rotunda, the echoes of footsteps on the polished marble floor, the way the natural light streaming in through the windows highlighted the gold leaf on the pillars. It was a sight one couldn't just rush through. As I moved around, I found myself drawn to the grand staircase. It was incredible with its winding mahogany railings, big marble steps, and fancy decorations, all lit up by a huge chandelier overhead. But I had no idea that things were about to get kind of creepy. It happened when I was about halfway up the staircase. It wasn't a sight, not exactly anyway. It was a sensation, sort of. Cold, creepy. I'd initially chalked it up to the natural chill of an old building. But this felt different. That's when I heard it. A low whisper. Like someone whispering, carried by the wind. I thought it must be someone nearby, but it felt closer. Almost like someone was whispering in my ear. Weird and creepy. Almost like I could understand it. I froze, trying to strain my ears to make sense of it, but all I could manage was a deep sense of unease. I kept telling myself it was just my imagination, or maybe the air vents or something. I even laughed a little to shrug off the mounting tension. Despite my attempts to rationalize it, the whispering didn't stop. I continued my exploring, slightly unnerved, I confess, but still determined. The voice seemed to fade as I moved away from the staircase, growing distant and less audible. I have to say, that was a relief. I mean, how spooky could it get in broad daylight in a place like this, right? Little did I know, my encounter was far from over. As I went further into the huge building, things started getting weirder. I had just turned the corner from the grand staircase when that ice-cold feeling hit me again, stronger this time, like a whisper right behind me. I just spun around without thinking, and that's when I saw it. Only for a second at first, at the corner of my vision, a figure at the grand staircase. I chalked it up to tricks of my mind, at first. Turning my full attention to it though, I realized it was there indeed. There, glowing faintly by the staircase, was a ghostly figure. It was almost human-like in size but floating, and its transparency made it appear as if it was made from fog or mist. Its face was unforgettable, pale and blurry like it was shifting right in front of me. The eyes were completely hollow, yet they seemed to glow, a unnerving yet fascinating sight. This wasn't something you just walked away from. Right then, I was more curious than scared. I just stood there. It felt like we were staring each other down. My heart was racing, and then those whispers started up again. But they weren't just in the background anymore. 
I could make out words, phrases even, but they made no sense to me. My blood turned cold. I blinked, and just like that the figure vanished. Everything went quiet, and suddenly, the building didn't feel so grand anymore. It was kind of creepy, to be honest. I thought about running out, I won't lie. But then, just like that, everything was back to normal. No chilling whispers, no eerie shadows, nothing. So, I did what any sane person on a vacation does, sighed, and made my way forward. There's something about unfinished business that leaves you unsettled. The whispers, that ghost, it was all still fresh in my mind. It made me approach the rest of the tour in a completely different light. Every corner triggered anticipation. Every creak felt like a whisper. Nothing else out of ordinary happened in my exploration. The rest of the day was quiet, almost too quiet after that. Though I'd never thought I'd call a tour through a magnificent building, like the Capitol Doll. I spent the following days deep in contemplation. The encounter had left a profound effect on me. Everywhere I looked, I saw the faint glow of that spectral figure, hauntingly beautiful yet terrifying. That ghostly encounter added a spooky layer to the building's history. It got me thinking about all the history in those walls, the stuff you don't see. I'd return to my normal routine soon enough, but the spectral figure that remained with me, in my dreams, during my meals, even in my idle time. I kept seeing its face, the see-through body, those glowing eyes, like a painting stuck in my head. Maybe it was just a figment of my stressed out mind, or maybe it was a cry from a forgotten past reaching out for help. Only the spectral figure knows. I'm a trail maintenance ranger, and I've been doing that job for around five years now, working in the heart of Kentucky's Red River Gorge geological area, to be precise. It's a beautiful spot with thick forests and cool rock formations, all tied together by the Red River. Being out there isn't just work for me. It's just so peaceful and quiet out there, a real break from everything. You know, there's something calming about keeping the trails nice for hikers clear of hazardous branches, rocks, or whatever Mother Nature throws down. I really liked the job. It was autumn. Leaves were changing colors everywhere, just falling off the trees. I was miles away from anyone, just me and the sounds of leaves rustling and bugs buzzing. I was deep in the wilderness, clearing fallen debris from recent storms, and of course, checking the trail signs hadn't been messed around by some pranksters or some critters. Keeping the trail safe is my main thing. Feels good, like I'm doing something important. Providing a safe space for people to enjoy their getaway into the welcoming arms of nature. It was getting dark as I was finishing up with a big mess of branches blocking the trail. Large branches from a split tree had collapsed squarely across the path. A surefire hazard for anyone out for a twilight hike. So there I was, huffing and puffing dragging off the last major obstruction when I first noticed it. It was a smell, rank and putrid. I've worked enough hard days out in the wild to know the smell of decay. It was that, but there was something else to it too. Something sour, pungent. It was just nasty. Being acquainted with the wild, you learn to pick up on these things. Scents can guide you the same way they do any other critter out there. They alert you to danger, guide you to water, or just tell you which way the wind's blowing. But this was different, kind of creepy and new to me. Then, faintly, carried aloft the whispering wind, I heard something, a faint noise, like a bark mixed with a deep grunt. Chills ran down my spine. Now, there isn't a creature that I know of that makes sounds like that, certainly not in this part of Kentucky. I got this weird, creepy feeling, like someone was watching me, I've always trusted my gut in the wilderness. It saved my hide more than once out there. And right now, every instinct I had was screaming at me that something wasn't right. I figured I'd check out the sound, being careful, you know, and marking my path so I wouldn't get lost. The closer I got, the worse the smell. Everything went quiet, except for the wind in the trees. I was following this weird noise and a nasty smell on the trail when I heard something rustling in the bushes. It wasn't like the usual sounds from small animals I'm used to. 
And then, just as I squinted past the failing sun to make sense of it, there it was. In the fading light, I saw this huge figure like eight feet tall or something. Before I could even figure out what I was looking at, it disappeared into the bushes. It was nothing like anything I'd ever seen before or since. Almost human-like. But the size of it, the sheer mass was mind-boggling. It was huge, covered in this mix of light and dark brown hair. And I could even see some reddish bits in the last bits of sunlight. Though it was at a considerable distance, I could swear that I saw a somewhat heavy jaw jutting out from under a very prominent forehead. Deep-set eyes capturing the last light of the day, casting an eerie glow. I just froze, holding my breath. Everything went silent after this weird, bark-like noise and a sort of knocking sound that faded away. I was just standing there on the trail, more curious than scared, staring at where it vanished. It was so quiet, like even the forest was holding its breath, waiting for something, but nothing did. There was only the harsh panting of my labored breaths and my confusion gripping me. Was it just a play of shadows? Was I hallucinating from exhaustion? Or was it something else? I hated to think it, but could it have been a Sasquatch? I stood staring at the void in a state of disbelief. After all my years here, it felt like I'd stumbled onto some big secret. Something hidden out here no one knew about. This creature, was it our neighbor? Living in the peace of these dense forests, past the traveled trails, beyond the intrusion of man and his loud explorations. Is this the real ruler of this land? Ever since then, every little sound or rustle in the bushes at night makes me think of one thing. Sasquatch. Some nights when I cannot sleep, I find my mind taking me back to that trail. The forest sounds come right back to me. The scent of damp earth is like it's right next to me. And then in the distance, a familiar figure fades into the woods, and I live the whole encounter over again as if it was happening for the first time. To be honest, I'm just waiting to be able to get past all of this. Does anyone have any suggestions for me? A few years back, I was part of a search and rescue team in Olympic National Park, Washington. Those wilderness areas were amazing, but pretty intimidating if you weren't used to them. And the sights there? They were absolutely amazing. Nature in its raw form can surprise even someone like me, who's been doing this for years. So, it was quite early one morning, quite foggy as well. The conditions were tough, like walking on ice. Being the veteran, they had me lead a drill, a mock search for someone lost, especially with the thick fog. It wasn't a chore for me. I've seen tougher days, and I was there to save lives, help those who bit off more than they could chew or wandered off the trail, or the ones who were just plain unlucky. We started off at dawn, the team and I, geared up, ready to face the wilderness. The plan was simple. I'd lead the team into the forest towards one of the more challenging terrains, mimic the conditions we faced when a real emergency call came in. The visibility was pretty bad, with fog hanging low and giving the forest an eerie feel. The trees were like shadows behind a white curtain. You know, in these situations, I always trusted my gut. It's like a gut feeling you get after doing this for a while. As we pressed onwards, it started making its presence known. I got that weird feeling, you know. I should have known better to ignore it. There was a clearing up ahead, hardly visible through the dense fog. As a practice, we were sweeping the area with our flashlights, slow and steady. Out there, in the wild silence of the forest, even the smallest noise can make your heart pound harder, make your senses even more alert. Then I heard it, a weird clicking sound, indistinct at first, almost mistaken for the rustle of leaves or the snap of twigs under the weight of a small animal. But then it came again, louder, much louder this time the echo lingering in the silent forest, shadows dancing around the trees as our flashlights attempted to penetrate the fog and capture what made that noise. I raised my hand, signaling the team to stop, to not make a sound, my heart pounding in my ears. We were all silently straining to hear, to identify the source of that strange, again, clicking sound. Something was off about it. 
It didn't fit into the forest's usual soundscape. I started thinking about all those horror stories told around campfires, but I knew I had to stay focused and calm. I got myself and the team ready for whatever was out there in the trees. I'll admit, at this point I was getting a bit edgy. The foggy air, the dense terrain, and the strange clicking noise were all serving a chilling cocktail of creepy. Up ahead in the foggy distance, illuminated briefly by the sweeps of our flashlights, I saw a silhouette. Definitely not a lost hiker or one of our crew. Something else. Something totally new to me. Just for a moment, a silhouette of a gaunt, tall figure, about seven feet or so. The shape was wrong, though. All hunched over and awkward, like it was on all fours. It bolted into the fog faster than any critter I've seen. We all just froze. We all noticed that odd clicking sound getting fainter. All of us wondering the same thing. What the heck did we just encounter? Gulping hard, I turned the beam of my flashlight towards the ridgeline, trying to catch another glimpse of the strange figure. But it was gone, vanished into the opaque white fog. Getting a distinct view in that damn fog and distance was next to impossible. But from what I could see, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. The figure had moved across the land with an unusual posture, much too fast and fluid for a human being. It was like a human, yet not human at all, with elongated pale limbs shining briefly in the uneasy light. Now, I am not one to scare easily. In this job, you gotta be tough, always ready for whatever the wild throws at you. But I'll admit right then, I was really scared. It was like a chill running down my spine. Without wasting a second, I made my decision. Signaling my team, we proceeded towards the area where the figure had vanished, our flashlights flickering erratically through the dense vegetation and thick fog. With every echoing click that resounded through the otherwise silent forest, I could feel my heartbeat pounding in my chest. It was more silence, more fog, and then nothing. No creature, no tracks, just the relentless fog dancing around our flashlights. We took turns trying to figure out where that clicking was coming from, but couldn't find anything big enough to make that noise. Eventually, once the excitement of the initial sighting subsided, we added it up to a trick of the fog, a result of tired minds, lack of sleep, and distorted echoes. Although we chose to continue the search drill, an air of uneasiness hung over the team after that. I decided not to share my initial sighting with the others. It would just escalate the fear distract them. I kept what I saw to myself, didn't want to freak out the others. Even after that eventful morning, I continued leading search and rescue missions, but that feeling of dread never really left me. Every rustle, every shadow sown by the dancing light of our flashlights would bring me back to that eerie encounter, that pale, strange figure haunting the edges of my memory. There was something about it that was deeply unsettling, it changed the way I felt about the forest, the wilderness that I had considered my comfort zone. I couldn't shake off the primal fear that had taken root in my mind. It made me realize that, sometimes, there are things out there we just can't explain. This isn't just a ghost story or some old tale. It's something I saw, something I experienced, a chapter from my life that taught me to respect the enigmatic depth of nature. We tend to believe that we understand everything and control all aspects of the world. But truth be told, there will always be mysteries. Mysteries around every corner, hidden in the depths, or like in my case, lurking unseen in the forests. 